It ain't changing what's on the inside of you. And so some people, when they find out they're pregnant, they get mad because they realize their life is going to change forever. And they don't want the responsibility. And some people hide it for a while because of fear. Like I was sitting there with that robe on and I was hiding what was really going on. I was trying to make sure I came into church looking crazy. I had my robe on on top underneath my shawl. I'm trying to tell them, Lord, forgive me. Uh, it's just the lint that's sticking to my clothes. I didn't want them to see me what was going on. I was trying to hide it. I didn't want anybody to know. I knew I was sitting here in praise and worship looking crazy with an old graduation robe on. And the reality was I was trying to hide it. I didn't want you to see what was inside of me. I didn't want you to see what was growing on the inside of me. So I was trying to hide it. So sometimes people try to hide what's on the inside of them. Sometimes because of fear. Fear that what's inside of them may not develop and come to full term. So they don't make division plain for others to see. They know what's down on the inside of them, but I don't know if it's really going to happen. I'm afraid. And that fear could be a result of past miscarriages. It's nothing like being pregnant. Believing for what's inside of you to come out. But yet in the midst of the pregnancy, all of a sudden you have cramps beyond control and what you thought was going to be life comes out as death. As death. The word of God says, when sin is conceived, it brings forth death. Death. Sometimes things die. But it's a messed up thing when you was looking forward to it and it died. And so sometimes if you've experienced miscarriages in your life, you don't always want to tell people because you're afraid. Sometimes the miscarriage in the spiritual sense is on you because you dropped the ball. You knew what God had for you to do, but you was the one that dropped the ball, and that's the reason why it never came to pass. Now God done put something else down in your spirit, and now you try to hide it. Because for real, you don't know if you're going to do the same thing again or not. So when you get pregnant again, you begin to question, do I have what it takes to bring this to pass? To full term, to deliver it the way it needs to. When you think about it, the average pregnancy lasts for nine months. From conception to delivery. Say process. Process. You have the first trimester, the second trimester, and the third trimester. The first trimester goes from week one to week 12. And guess what? It is during this particular trimester that one go, undergoes many changes. You go undergo many changes because you realize that you might need to make some changes in your daily routines. Before you was pregnant, there were certain things that you could do. But now that you're pregnant, God is showing you that you can't do those things no more. So this is the hard time because it's hard trying to go from the old to the new. See, this pregnancy is a new thing. And so sometimes in the beginning stages, it is very, very hard. Because of the changes that you have to make in your daily routine. I think about it when you're pregnant. Your eating habits have to get better so that you can deliver a healthy baby. It is impossible to deliver a healthy baby spiritually if you don't feast on the word. So now that you're pregnant, you got to begin to feast on the word like never before. It will strengthen you and it will strengthen what's growing on the inside of you. Your habits got to change. When it was all about you, you could starve yourself to death. But when you've discovered that you've been pregnant with purpose, you got to realize it ain't about me. I'm eating for two. You think about your ministry and what's on the inside of you. It ain't about you. You're eating for thousands. You're eating for hundreds. You may be eating for 20, but the reality of it is you're not eating for yourself anymore. And so in order for things to develop properly, you got to change. When you think about it, you can't take in anything anymore. Spiritually, when you understand that you are pregnant with purpose, you realize I can't take in anything anymore. Psalm 119 verse 37 says, turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things. Psalm 101 says, I will not set any.
anything wicked before my eyes. You have to understand that when you are pregnant, when you have something growing on the inside of you, what you do affects your baby. It affects your baby. That's why they tell you when you're pregnant, read to your baby. You think, oh, it's in the sack. It can't hear me. But you're told to read to your baby. Play music to the baby. When you stress, it affects the baby. So what you take in and what you do affects what's going on on the inside of you. So don't deceive yourself into thinking that it doesn't. And then you move into the next trimester. The second trimester. That's weeks 13 through 28. This stage is a a little easier sometimes you didn't got past being sick and all that other stuff. And so now you got a grip on this thing. No longer are you frantic about the fact that you're pregnant. You realize it is what it is. Some of you have come to a point where you, you've made a decision. Because, you know, when you first find out sometimes what you say is, am I going to keep it or am I going to get rid of it? So now you've made a decision that, you know, I'm going to go ahead and keep this. It's a little easy now, and I can deal with it a little better in this second trimester. So this trimester, so this stage is often a little easier because you have finally accepted what's going on on the inside of you. You have come to a point where you say, God, if this is your will, then let your will be done. If you want this thing to be birthed out of me, then let your will be done. You can see what's in you beginning to manifest. Mother folks talked about this is the year of manifestation. There are some things that are down on the inside of us that are going to manifest. But right now you can begin to see in this phase that there are some things that are beginning. They haven't totally manifested, but they are beginning to manifest. Your look is changing. And now other folks around you can see. At one point in time in the first trimester, people couldn't tell you was pregnant because you look the same. You can wear the same clothes and everything. Now that you're in the second trimester, people can look at you and see something different. Janelle ain't the same no more. What's going on with her? A couple of years ago, she ain't looked like this, but something looked different. She pregnant. She pregnant. And so now, things are beginning to manifest in this this particular tri uh, trimester. And so in this stage, you will begin to feel your baby move. For us ladies that have been pregnant, we know that's one of the most exciting moments and also one of the most uh, 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 tripping moment moments too. Because all of a sudden, you, blah, 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 what is that? You know, you, you're trying to figure out what is going on, feeling a little flutter or something. You know, and it's really amazing in this moment because sometimes you can see a whole elbow go across your stomach as time goes on. It's like, really? It's amazing. And so now it's in this particular trimester that you begin to embrace what's inside of you. Now you can't really wait to see what's inside of you. And so in this stage, you will feel your baby beginning to move, which will encourage you even the more. Sometimes when you don't see stuff happening, you can be frustrated. You can want to throw in the towel. Your mind can tell you, I ain't really pregnant for real. The devil is a liar. But the reality of it is, sometimes when you don't see stuff taking place, you can get frustrated. And so when you have the movement taking place, it encourages you even the more to continue with the process. Or at least it should. I think about it. For real, turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 1. 